Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we are looking at the MA25. This is a coax to ethernet adapter from ASUS. What's it for? Why does it exist? What can you do with it? And how can it help your home to get a lot more internet into it? Big thanks to ASUS for sending me this MA25 for review. Let's get started by rolling the intro. Let's start with some context. What is the MA25? Well, it is a little box. Actually, there's two of them when you buy the two pack. And what it does, it converts the signal between a coaxial cable and an ethernet cable on two ends to give you basically an internet connection without having to rip up your walls if you already have a coaxial cable in each of your rooms in your home. Now coaxial cables generally are used for actually internet, especially in the US and of course in other places in the world. Not so much in Australia, but we'll get to that in a moment. What that means is that if you have a coaxial cable in one room and a modem in another room and you want to run a hardwired high speed internet connection to that room, than you can with one of these. Now, what speeds may you expect via a coaxial cable? Well, coaxial cables are just a copper cable with a lot of shielding. It's actually a very thick copper cable and the runs are generally pretty short in around your home to the splitter and back out to another room. Well, the speeds that this can achieve is 2.5 gigs. Of course, that is the rated speed and we have some tests to back up those claims and we'll go through that in a moment. So what do you need to make this work? Well, of course, you need a coaxial cable in between. You need power to each of these and they do come with little powers and we'll have a look at what's in the box in a second. And then you need your ethernet out to the modem or the switch or directly to a device such as a computer. Generally speaking, these work well to extend ranges of things like Wi-Fi extenders or even mesh devices or connecting your NAS box from the garage or from your basement. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. The MA25 comes with a surprising amount of accessories and it's also in an environmentally friendly box so uh, obviously it's great. Anyway let's turn to the back where we need to rip off a bit of a bit here. I've already opened it obviously and I wanted to point out this little QR code here. It actually tells you that you can turn this box into a little organizational box for your little tidbits. Anyway, once we start opening it up we see our two adapters. They are pretty big actually. They have little mounts here that you can actually screw onto the wall and hang it because once you connect your coaxial cable to the wall you can be sitting right there next to that wall plug. On the front there we've got the coax plug and then we've got the mode 1 and 2 in case you've got a DOSSIS 3.1 or 3.0 modem this will mean that in each of those modes it won't affect anything else on the coax cable loop that you have around your home. On the back we've got the MPS cable to connect things together, very good security. We've got the DC in, we've got our LAN port, 2.5 gig. And on the side here we've got three lights for connection, security and MOCA. And just if you look at the angle there you'll see a little bit of a coax to ETH 2.5 gig. And if you buy the two pack you have two of them. And that's great. If we move on to the inside, this is where we get all our accessories. We've got two coax cables. They're actually really, really short. They're only supposed to run from the wall to the adapter. So we'll put those to the side. We've also got two ethernet cables, which is pretty cool. Not a lot of companies give you so many, I guess, accessories. We've got uh, screws and drywall plugs, just in case you want to hang this on a drywall. We've got some 90 degree adapters for your cable so it doesn't stick out when you run the coax cable in. This is fantastic. Awesome to see this stuff. Oh, we've got more screws. Awesome. And we've, yeah, we've got two of those 90 degree adapters there. And then we've got our North American plugs. Two of them, of course, because there are two adapters. They are DC in 12 volt and 0.5 amp. So they're not particularly powerful. And of course, if you're in Australia, your plugs will be 
Australian. Okay, let's get into some testing. The first test I wanted to do is the most simplest one and basic to get a base reading of the device. So that means I connected my computer on the 2.5 gig ethernet connection on the motherboard and then I used a 2.5 gig USB-C adapter to my MacBook. Connecting both devices via just the ethernet cable, I was able to confirm that, well, it is 2.5 gigs in speed. As you can see, the results speak for themselves. And that's your baseline, that's your ethernet cable, a short run computer to computer. Now, if you have older devices, you might have to put together a crossover cable. I'll link below some instructions on how to do that. But in this case, with two devices that are very new, you don't need a cross cable to connect them directly. The speeds depend on your network interface cards, and that means both computers were performing at peak because they're both quite new and both support 2.5 gigs. The results over four tests are 2.2 and 2.4 on average, so basically as close as possible to the 2.5. This is the best case scenario. What I want you to pay attention to is actually the ping and the jitter. On the ethernet cable, which is CAT6, directly to the two devices, the ping is 2 and the jitter is 0.2. And that is perfect performance for such a device. Now, of course, running this through multiple other tests will give you a variation, but I found 0.2 and 2 to be just the average across all tests. Now, onto the simple test, which is running a coaxial cable to the adapters and then back out to the devices via a short ethernet cable. Those speeds were actually pretty darn impressive. Running such a short coaxial cable was the best case scenario and I wanted to give it a good go. We received download of 2.1 gig and an upload of 2.4, pretty much on par with the performance of an ethernet cable. Furthermore, the ping was a little bit higher, going to six from two. You will absolutely not notice the difference at all. When you're playing a video game at 60 to 50 to 40, a difference of four is not going to make any any visible difference to your gaming. Furthermore, the jitter at 0.8 is absolutely fine. Again, it's such a small difference, you will not notice it. Now, running the same test, but with a much longer direct coaxial cable gave us very similar results at 2.2 two gigs down and 2.4 gigs up. These speeds were absolutely fantastic and the cable length was about 15 to 20 meters. I'm not quite sure because it is in the roof and of course they're kind of tangled through but it is quite lengthy because it's going from one end to the house to the other. I was absolutely impressed with the speeds. The ping went up by seven which is expected with a longer run and of course the quality of the cable, the cable that I'm using is about 15 years old and that's saying a lot. Nonetheless, the shielding and the quality of the connection was good enough to get a very decent speed. The jitter actually dropped to 0.2, which again could just be the way it was screwed on and multiple times or even the touch points or maybe the copper cable being a bit thicker than the ones provided with this cable. Now in Australia, most of the time you get a TV signal into one room and it's usually something like this. This is a little pin connection which is standard across Australia and New Zealand. This one in fact is a coaxial adapter to the antenna plug. And so my test was where I had antenna cables inside the home with the ends being these antenna plugs. And so for Australian homes and New Zealand homes, I did this test where I used the actual antenna, which goes to a very basic plastic splitter. And in fact, the antenna cables do not use the same shielding as coaxial cables. So your performance will vary and mine in fact did. Now antenna cables, AKA TV aerial cables are coaxial cables by nature obviously, but not all coaxial cables are antenna cables. Coaxial cables refer to the design of the shielding. And so in Australia and New Zealand, terrestrial television cables have less shielding than what many would call a standard coaxial cable, even though technically it is. Generally, they are distinguished by their impedance, which is normally 75 ohms or much lower at 50 ohms. And so the larger the diameter, usually the thicker the actual copper inside. And so the loss is much lower, giving you a much better speed. In my home, the old aero cable is around 50 ohms. So using the antenna to coaxial adapter with very old cables, we got a pretty interesting result at 1.5 gigs down and 1.5 gigs up. However, the ping was only five and the jitter was at 0.4, a very interesting result. And so it begs the question, 
Why? Well, I'm assuming it's actually the connector plus the lack of shielding across that cable. But to also point out the value of it, not everybody has a 2.5 gig NIC, which is a network interface card. And so one gig is mostly what modems, switches can do, unless you buy a more expensive switch and modem. And so at 1.5, the maximum throughput is only gonna be one gig. So you're actually achieving a fantastic speed for a home. I, in fact, do not use my 2.5 gig NIC at all. This is the only time I'm utilizing it to do the test but in my entire home all my devices are connected via a one gig so depending on the performance and the cabling inside your home I think a minimum of one gig will be absolutely fine for your home and the fact that this can do 2.5 devices that are compatible will allow you to use the full speed now a few things about the device we have a little switch on the back if you are using a DOC SIS 3.1 modem in your home that connects to a coaxial cable and that does the internet well can you still use this absolutely you've got a little switch here to change through the bands to make sure this doesn't interfere with anything else connected on the copper cables one other thing to mention is a little button called an MPS button this is what you need to press the first time you connect to your network or into the thing it will sync these two devices together and then also put in a very secure connection between the two, which means that if anybody else tries to plug into the same coax network, they will not be able to get the internet. They only come out of this ethernet port and this one right here. So why would you use it? Well, ultimately it depends on your home. If you have coax cables running through each room, this is a perfect way to get wired high speed connection with low ping and very low jitter across the home connecting big devices that use a lot of data or gaming computers back to your modem where a internet plug is located well this is perfect for it so at 149 american dollars for a two pack this is a perfect solution to extend the internet in your home at 222 australian dollars this is a little bit expensive, but only because of the exchange rate. Now I'll put some links below where you can find the deals for the Australian side, but at 149 American dollars, this is a fantastic purchase to extend your home with high speed internet without having to drill through walls, add new cables, and of course giving you quite a bit of portability. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like this video. Big thanks to ASUS for sending me these for review. Check out the links below to their website, where you can buy it, and of course some deals for the Aussies. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.